Hello everyone. In this lesson, we will answer the question, how do I get my own WordPress, right? So how do I get my own public facing website and how do I get my own administrator dashboard? Well, there are two main ways to get started with WordPress and it all boils down to two websites, wordpress.com and wordpress.org. Now they each have their own pros and cons. Uh, so let me go over those right now. Let's start with wordpress.com. The pros of wordpress.com is that it's very easy to get started. You simply visit wordpress.com and you sign up for an account. So it's really similar to signing up for a new email account with Google or Gmail, or it's like signing up for a new account at Facebook. It's super intuitive, super simple. Now they do offer different types of accounts or plans. So some of the plans cost a monthly fee, but they also have a free plan to get you started. And there's no time limit for the free plan. It will remain free forever. All right, changing gears, let's talk about the cons of WordPress.com. So number one, you are not in complete control of your website. Your website lives on the WordPress.com servers, and this means you are really at their mercy. This means they limit which plugins you can use. They limit which themes you can use. Now I realize at this point in the course, we haven't even covered what a plugin or theme is, but you can imagine that you don't want to be limited. That's never a good thing. So the general idea is that you can only customize the parts of your website that WordPress.com allows you to customize. Now, depending on your business or depending on what you want to achieve with your website, this might not bother you. If you just want to create a simple blog and be able to write and share your writing with the entire world, WordPress.com can be an amazing service. However, WordPress.com is clearly not for everyone uh, because it is very restrictive or limiting. So now let's really change gears and talk about WordPress.org. Let's go over the pros and cons. We'll start with the pros. Number one, this is the full WordPress experience. This is what people think of when they think of WordPress. With WordPress.org, you are in 100% complete control of your website. You are the owner of your website. You can customize anything you want. You can use any plugin. You can use any theme. Again, at this stage in the course, we don't really know what those words mean, plugin and theme, but you can imagine that the freedom to use whatever you want is a good thing. With WordPress.org, you're also free to monetize your website. That means you can run ads or sell products, so on and so forth. And the final pro, and this is not necessary, you don't ever need to learn how to code if you don't want to, but if in the future you decide you want to learn how to code, with WordPress.org, you're free to customize the code of every single aspect of your website. So in a nutshell, WordPress.org is amazing. It's personally what I use for my websites. Now, I haven't even gotten to the cons of WordPress.org yet, and I can already tell you that this is what we're going to use in the course. Now, you are free to use WordPress.com if you'd like to outside of this course. But for the purposes of learning as much as possible in this course, I encourage you to follow along with me and give WordPress.org a try. Now let's talk about the cons. There's really only one con to WordPress.org, and that is that you need to find your own web hosting. What does that mean? What is web hosting? Well, remember when I said that with WordPress.com, your website lives on their servers, and this is what allows them to limit or restrict what you can do. With WordPress.org, your website will live on whatever web host company you choose. And there are hundreds of thousands of web host companies to choose from. A web host is just a company that leaves their computers or servers on 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And your website lives on their servers, so that way your website is accessible to the world around the clock. Now, any web host worth using costs money. But don't worry, I want you to be able to work through this course without spending an extra penny. So I've partnered with a web host so you can get started for free. You won't even need to enter a credit card or any form of payment. We'll talk more about that in just a few minutes. But anyways, with web hosts, you typically pay a monthly or yearly amount. And in return, they host your website for you. Generally speaking, you get what you pay for, meaning the more expensive the web host, the faster your site will load for your visitors. Now, like I said, there are tons of web host companies to choose from, and it can be difficult to know where to begin. Which company should we use? 
Well, if we open up our web browser and go to the official wordpress.org website, we see that up in the header within this main navigation bar, towards the right hand side there's a link named hosting. Over the years, the WordPress team has paid attention to which hosting companies treat their customers the best and make working with WordPress a breeze. Now, you don't have to use one of these companies, but these are among the best. So we see Bluehost, Dreamhost, Flywheel, and SiteGround. Now, normally, it costs money to sign up with one of these web hosts, but I've partnered with SiteGround for this course. And thanks to that partnership, you can get started with your own hosting and WordPress site without spending another penny. Now, I don't want you to feel like you have to use SiteGround. If you want to Google and do your own research and choose a hosting company on your own, more kudos to you. But as the teacher of this course, I want to provide a clear example path that anyone can follow. All right, so let's get started. As a student in this course, you are free to visit the following URL. Learn web code.com slash student dash hosting. So learnwebcode.com is my website and then the slash student hosting will take us to the free SiteGround signup. So if I push enter to visit this URL, we see special deal for Learn Web Code students. Create your website now. So I'm going to click this sign up button. Just enter your email address and make up a password. Then just fill in a bit of basic contact info. So basically your name and your address. Scroll down a bit further. Within this box, three months is the only available option. And again, it's not like at the end of three months they can automatically bill you. They can't because we aren't even entering a credit card. So we see zero dollars and zero cents. And if we scroll down a bit further, make sure this box is checked. And the submit button reads pay now, uh, but obviously our grand total is zero dollars and zero cents. Um, so you're not actually paying. So go ahead and click the pay now button. And that should take you to this success screen. Now it may take five seconds or it may take 10 minutes, but very soon you should receive an email from SiteGround. In that email, look for a button or link that reads log in to customer area. Or you can simply hover over this button in the top right that reads log in. And you can enter your email and password right here. Or if you actually click right about here, that will take you to the dedicated login page. It doesn't matter how you log in. Okay, so go ahead and type in your email and your password and then click sign in. That should take you to this page. For this first option of set up your website, Let's choose the option of start a new website. And then from these available options, obviously we are interested in the first one, WordPress. So click that. Let me scroll down a bit. Within this section, we are going to create the administrator user for WordPress, right? So this will be the account that has access to the WordPress administrator dashboard screens. So enter your email address and a username. Here's a quick security tip. Instead of using a username of admin, choose something that's a bit more difficult for other people to guess. So maybe my secret admin or something along those lines. And then make up another password here. And before you click this confirm button, double check that you spelled your email address correctly. Okay, so when you're all set, click the confirm button which will take us to this next screen. And from here, we just want to check this checkbox that says we agree to the terms of service, and then we can click on complete setup. Now it might take five seconds or five minutes, but once this screen appears, then go ahead and click on proceed to customer area. All right, now this is our site ground dashboard, but we are interested in our WordPress admin dashboard. So up towards the top here, click on my accounts. And then right here, I see the website that I just set up about a minute ago. You will have a different URL right here, probably your first name and then the first letter of your last name. So go ahead and click on that. And this is your very own WordPress website. 
All right, so you could share this URL with anyone in the world and they would be able to see this website. All right, but if this is your website, you want to be able to log in as the administrator so you can edit and change and customize your website. Up in the address bar, at the end of your URL, add on a forward slash and then wp-login.php. And again, this part of your URL will be different. So press enter and then just add the WordPress admin username and password. Remember, this is the username where I told you to maybe use something like my secret admin or something along those lines. So go ahead and type in your username and password right now. Click login. And if you're using the free SiteGround account, you'll see a screen that looks like this. You will not see this screen if you are using any other web hosting company. This is a quick start guide that the SiteGround company created to try and make the process of creating a WordPress website a bit easier. However, this quick start guide is not necessary. You're free to use it if you want to, but I recommend just scrolling down to the bottom and clicking on the exit link. If you do want to use this quick start guide and you click start now, nothing bad will happen and the default choices are great. They won't hurt anything. I just think this step is unnecessary. So I recommend clicking exit. Okay, now again, if you're using SiteGround like I am, you'll see a screen that looks like this. If you're using any other web host, your WordPress admin dashboard will not look exactly like this. That's okay. In fact, if you are using SiteGround like I am, I actually encourage you to do the following. We can go ahead and click this don't show this again message here because we don't really need the SiteGround quick start guide. It's not a part of the official WordPress software. This is basically just a message from our web hosting company SiteGround trying to make our lives easier. So I'd recommend clicking don't show this again. And then finally, if you're using SiteGround on our dashboard here, I recommend scrolling down to the very bottom and down here we see this sentence that reads, if you wish, you can always switch to the default dashboard. So basically what's going on here is that the SiteGround web hosting company is trying to give us a dashboard that makes our lives easier. The issue is that this is not the official WordPress dashboard. So for the sake of having everyone in this course be on the same page, I recommend to scroll down to the bottom here and if you're using SiteGround you can just click switch to default. You'll notice as soon as I do this my admin dashboard looks a bit different and that's okay. This is the official WordPress dashboard and this is what I want you to get used to. Here I can see that the SiteGround optimizer is trying to show me a message. This is not important. I can go ahead and click this X towards the right hand side to hide that message. Also, I see this note here about personal data and privacy. Towards the bottom right hand corner of this little message, I can just click dismiss. And congratulations. This is your admin dashboard area. And from here, you can customize your website, which is what we'll be learning how to do in depth throughout this entire course. Now, I do want to point out that web hosting companies are not charities. The hard drive space and bandwidth we use, even on our experimental websites like this, cost hosting companies money. So let me talk a little about how this free SiteGround student account works. First, you'll notice that you did not get your own custom .com domain. So for now, the URL of your website is simply your name and then sgedu.site. Secondly, as we saw on the signup screen, this student account will only last for three months. Now we won't get billed at the end of three months. Uh, remember, we didn't even enter a credit card, but I do want you to be aware of that time limit. Now three months is more than enough time to learn how to use WordPress and create a great website. And that's the entire point of this course, to learn the ins and outs of WordPress. If by the end of this course, you're really happy with the website you create and you want it to be tied to a real custom yourname.com domain and you want it to live forever instead of three months, that's going to cost a bit of money. And in the name of transparency, I do want to say that if you decide to sign up with SiteGround, it won't cost you anything extra, but they will send me a referral reward for letting you know about them. Again, don't feel like you need to use SiteGround. 
there are hundreds of thousands of web hosts out there for you to research and the choice is yours. But really, choosing which web host you want to give your money to is outside the scope of this course. I'm just here to get you into your own WordPress sandbox or playground so you can start experimenting and master the art of creating websites and blogs with WordPress. And if you have followed along with this lesson, you now have your own WordPress playground. I'm so excited to start building a site with you, and in our next lesson, we are off to the races. So let's keep rolling along, and I'll see you in the next lesson.